okay? And this equation actually has a few special cases. So we won't even be concentrating on actually solving the entire equation to start. So special cases. Plus u, plus u t, plus big u times. So here we let let me use small u to denote the unknown solution. And uh, uh, so initial condition. Uh, with initial condition. u at any x and t equal to 0 uh, is given. Alright, so one special case is ODE. So what happens, uh, would, what could happen that makes this differential equation an ODE? du dt equal to 0? du dx is 0 or u and kappa are both equal to 0 yeah that's the case when I uh, the equation I have is decoupled in space so for every x you can solve this equation independently so I, I should still write partial u partial t but it's u is still a function of x and t right but because partial u partial t is just equal to f you can solve this equation individually for every different x. If you want the solution of u at x equal to 1, t equal to 10, for example, you just need to look at what is u at x equal to 1, t equal to 0. Use that as the initial condition for my ODE and just to solve it using an ODE solver. Right? So that's the case that we already know how to deal with. Okay? The second case is pure advection equation is partial u partial t plus a big u times partial u partial x is equal to zero so that's the case where we have seen the solution to be doing what just to translate exactly and this is actually not so much harder than the ODE case. In some sense, it's actually easier than the ODE case. The trick of seeing that is something that uh, Dr. Einstein did. Is instead of looking at space and time separately, looking at them as a continuum. So we have a two-dimensional plot. This is space and this is time. Okay, and remember, if the solution is just advancing towards the right at a constant speed, what would the solution's contour line be looking like uh, on this plot? It's a, it's a linear line, right? So let's say the p if the peak of the solution is here at this moment after a certain moment so this is t equal to 0 at t equal to 1 where is the peak of the solution would be this position plus u right so okay so here uh, I would have a length of u gone writing this equation and this happens not only to the peak of the solution it also happens to a trough of the solution it happens to everywhere every contour line in the solution right so basically what I'm saying is that the solution is constant along these lines of course this is only from the observation we had in looking at the movies can we show that it is actually the case by looking at that particular equation? How do we show that the solution is actually constant along such lines? 
find dtdx? Right, okay, to find the dtdx, that is, what if we look at two points on this, on the same line, but infinitesimally different? Okay, such a line would be characterized by what equation? By x equal to what? How, how do you use a mathematical equation to describe the location of such a line? x as a certain function of t, how do you do that? Yeah, we know the slope. Mm -hmm. Dx dt times, like, x dt times dt. Yeah, x would be equal to dx dt times the. I mean, you're, uh, yeah, that's right. So that's any line, right? Any straight line, delta x would be equal to dx dt times delta t, right? But here, what is dx dt? That's a very good uh, way to start. I know that as t goes by one unit, uh, my x would go towards a u unit. It's one over the slope. Okay, so so let's say let's figure out uh, x is equal to basically uh, this is a linear line, right? So all of these lines are x equal to uh, a times t plus b, right? And these are because they are straight lines. Okay. And uh, uh, for example, here, let's say this is x0. When t is equal to 0, what is x? x0. x0. So b has to be what? And b has to be x0, right. All right. And we have many different x0s. Each line has a different x0. OK, so now when t is equal to 1, what is x? x0 plus u. x0 plus u. So what is a? When t is equal to 1, x has to be x0 plus u, right? X0 plus yeah, so what is a? What has uh, a have to be? U. A has to be u, that's right. So each of these lines are what we call characteristic lines. All right. These characteristic lines are characterized by this equation x equal to u t plus x zero for any different x zeros. Now, if you look at two different locations along this line, they are at the same x zero but at different t's, right? How can I look at the change between these two different locations? Well, it's the small u solution at u t1 plus x0 and t1 minus the small u at u t0 plus x0 and t0, right? So let's imagine I have two uh, t0 and t1. So this difference, when uh, let's say divided by t1 minus t0, let's look at the rate of change, right? As the limit t1 goes to t0, what is this? What is the rate of change? Can you represent this as a certain derivative? This is equal to du, not just any u, at ut plus x0 and t dt, right? Writing this as just a du dt is confusing because u is actually a function of two variables, not just the one variable. So you have to write down du of one x actually as a function of t and t dt. 